Hi guys. I found out like three days later that I was pregnant. And then when there was no heartbeat, that was really hard to have to tell the kids and just to process for us. We haven't gone through that before. Welcome back to the channel. I would like to thank Walmart for sponsoring today's vlog. I'm putting together a gift for my friend's baby shower. As a mom of five, I would like to think that I am pretty experienced in baby products, and I have a bunch of tried and trues that I get on Walmart. So super simple to just download the app, shop online, and you can have it delivered to your door, which is what I need these days with our busy schedule. I'm gonna show you what I got. These are some of my very favorite products, and I'm really excited to give them to her. The Frida Baby Grow With Me Tub. This is awesome because you get a lot of bang for your buck. It's gonna last you from zero to 24 months. This is the holy grail for baby and freshly postpartum mama. This is gonna come with the Frida Baby No Suction, the Windy, the nail clippers, and then seriously, like game changer is this peri bottle for mom after birth. Has this little curved nozzle to spray, which the ones from the hospital are just straight down. So this is like, cannot, cannot recommend this enough. I had it with Asher and it was like seriously game changer. Then I have these Aqua Pure Pampers wipes. These are my favorite because they are 99% water. I love the Honest shampoo, body wash, and lotion. It's just so calming and smells delicious and keeps baby just smelling fresh and cozy. And then of course we have to get into like the snuggly, yummy stuff. So every single baby since Gemma has had a cream ribbed onesie. These are my favorite. They're gender neutral and just so cute and cozy. Also got this super soft blanket. It has this pretty neutral print on it and it's stretchy and like I wish you could feel it, it is like butter. So all of these products I got on Walmart and I'm gonna link them all up so if there's something specific that you wanna find, you can find them in the links in our description. Now for Asher's. This big old baby, it's time to get some potty training going on. He's like two and a half now, we'll see if he's ready, but I got these cute little baby shark uh, pull-ups that I think he will like and will help convince him that it is time to be potty trained. So again, links are in the description and let's get on with the vlog. I'm over here, big daddy. You're like, why do you move your feet so much? Bend them. <laughs> you can't do that. Hello, chat fam. What's up, chat fam? Today we're going to do a Q&A. So I posted all the questions on my Instagram. I have them here and we're gonna go through as many as we can. It's been so long since we sat down and had a formal question and answer. Formal conversation. A formal convo. So we decided it's a beautiful Sunday and we're going to film some Q&A for you guys, answer some of your questions. You guys that are new get to know us better. So the girls and I just got home from Wisconsin yesterday, but our flight was at 5.15. We had to get up at 3.15 in Wisconsin, which was 2.15 a.m. here. So kind of crazy last. Day. And then this morning, our carbon monoxide alarm went off. Holy cow. And that was the whole thing. We had to go outside. The fire department had to come. Everything's fine. And then our flooding alarm went off for the basement. And it's just been wild. It's been a wild 24 hours. And carbon monoxide, that's just a reminder to everybody. Make sure you have them all over your house. Ours was just a false alarm, but it's still scary. Let's get right into the Let's questions. Let's get started. The first one, why did you guys stop vlogging like you used to? So I feel like we've kind of addressed this before. I have on my Instagram when we've done Q and A's before. The main reason, I guess, is Derek's gotten full time a full time job. He's working now full time, where before he had quit and we were doing YouTube full time. And it's a lot of filming. Hi. Come here, Reese. Come here. Oh, look how it's a cute lot of filming is. and editing, and it's just very time consuming. You can't. It's not realistic to do YouTube full time and have a full-time job. So, the kids are getting older, Hi, they have super busy schedules, 
So I have a busy schedule catering to them. He's working out of the house and we just don't have the time that we used to to put into it, but. Daddy, my foot is peeling. Oh, it's peeling? <laughs> we do it when we can. Oh, no. Like Kara said, when we started doing the YouTube, it was perfect timing because she was pregnant with the triplets and so I was able to stay home. And we knew we wanted to document that and I'm a documenter. Like regardless, I film everything always. I love to watch family videos, home videos. So we're still doing it now, but I edit all the vlogs that takes so long to do them. So that's why there's been less of them. We're trying to get them out when we can because we love watching. Yeah, the kids especially right now love watching all of our old vlogs and it's so fun to have that. And there's like so many cute things in them that I wouldn't remember. And then we watch one and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like I remember when Gemma used to say that or For instance, when one of them used to do this. We were watching a random vlog on our TV and this came up of Gemma talking about eating a bug. <laughs> yeah. Bugs are not tasty because I don't. So two bugs. You saw Ge bugs? Yes. Gemma, have you ever eaten a bug before? I not eat a bug before. I just will put it out and and you Whoever and you ever that pinchy bug guard to my mouth and a pinch in my tongue and put out of this. <laughs> she always tells me the story what? that a pincher bug got in her mouth and it pinched her tongue and then she just spit it out. And I just pit it out. Who's so it out? it's Gemma spit. trying to say spit it out. A lot of you may not know unless you're on Instagram that I recently had a miscarriage. Um baby number six was coming. We went to my first appointment and there was a heartbeat so we told the kids and we told family and then at my next appointment there wasn't a heartbeat anymore so we had a rough little patch there with that and this question is are you going to try for another baby anytime soon sorry about your miscarriage and then the next one was actually when is our wedding anniversary so our wedding anniversary is february 8th and that was the exact due date of the baby was on our 10 year anniversary february 8th so we weren't necessarily trying for baby number six he wanted one more i was still deciding and then i had just decided that i thought i was ready to like move on out of the baby phase and I found out like three days later that I was pregnant. So then I got really excited about it and the kids were so excited. So we were like ready to go. And then when there was no heartbeat, that was really hard to have to tell the kids and just to process for us. We haven't gone through that before. And it's crazy how common it is. I had so many people write to me telling me that they've gone through the same thing and it's just so heartbreaking. So we now going to probably try for number six. I feel like we'll maybe have, I don't wanna try for a long time. I wanna just like try for a little bit, see if it happens. And then if it doesn't happen, maybe just be ready to move on to the next chapter of our lives. But I don't know, I think the kids especially are like, they are so excited and they really want us to have one more now. Yes, we'll try again for maybe a few months and then we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Definitely are so, so appreciative of, it makes us want to hold these guys a little tighter, all our five right now, but um, we were so You're ready. So special. We were so ready for that sixth one, and we were like, we were so excited to tell everybody. We were just about to like announce it. We appreciate all you guys' support, those that knew from Instagram. But yeah, now that we kind of have realized that that's like accepted at baby six, like we, I for sure want another one. At least yeah. just one more. I feel like this, our family is complete with one more. It was hard because I, my body wasn't registering the miscarriage. So they think that there was no heartbeat for like four weeks probably. And then it still wasn't registering it. So I ended up going in for a DNC surgery. And now we're just like waiting, waiting to start trying again. Kara, what would your days look like having all five kiddos in school this year? So Gemma's gonna be in first grade. They are in preschool again. It's their last year of preschool before they start kindergarten next year. And Asher is going to be in like the tiny little preschool class, just three days a week for two and a half hours. I don't know. It's gonna be like a crazy change for us to have. I'm gonna have free mornings three days a week, like a few two and a half hours where I don't have any kids at home. Most wild to me that Asher is going to be that old. Like he's gonna be in school, like little Asher boy. We still call him our little baby Asher. He's a he's baby. A baby. He's a big baby now, but he is yeah. going to be in school and it's going to be nice. For it's going to be really fun. <laughs> 
a little break, but also kind of crazy. It'll be fun for the kids to all be at school together because I know when they see each other in the hall, they like run up and hug each other and it's so cute. So it'll be fun for Asher to be a part of that too. Another question was what type of schooling do we plan for the kids, hybrid, public, private? So right now they're all in private school. We actually were trying to do a boundary transfer for Gemma to go to a public school for a little bit, um, but that got denied because the classroom was full. Hi, Ren. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You guys can see our girls um, did their own lipstick today. They did their own makeup. Hi, guys. <laughs> Gemma got denied for the public school that we wanted her to go to because their classrooms were full. So she's gonna stay in the private school for one more year and then maybe we'll try again next year, we'll see. What are our kids' bedtimes for school? Well, Asher goes to bed at seven o'clock almost every night. We try to get them into bed around 7.30, 8, and Gemma's like 8.30. So it'll probably be about the same when school starts. Uh, we love getting Asher down at 7. He sleeps so long and so well. Yeah. Like over 12 hours. That's been working out. And then these guys, we try to do like 7.30, 8. Hi. But sometimes it's a late night, huh, Ren? <laughs> okay. Someone said, do you wonder if you and D, I'm, I'm guessing that's me, right? Had kids too young? I got pregnant with Gemma when I was 26 and I had her when I was 27. I had the triplets when I was 29 and Asher, I think I was, maybe I was almost 32. So I don't really feel like we had them young. In fact, Kara, I remember was saying, she's like thinking, I'm rounding up to my 30s, like I'm getting too old, I wanna have a big family. Then we kind of struggled with the first one with Gemma. So I remember she was like, I'm getting it too old. It took like a year longer gonna... than what we were hoping. She kind of thought, you know, she's getting worried almost like she's not gonna have that big family because <laughs> he didn't start too young. And now- And the triplets came. Yeah, she's all in a big bundle. And I feel like nowadays too, people are having babies later and later. Like I'm 34, we're gonna have another one. I'll probably be 35 by the time. But Was I mean, it too young? No, I don't think so. I think it's more common even to have babies later now. What are the pros and cons of living in Utah? Living in Utah. Pro, it's beautiful. I'm from here, Kara's not, but I have that this is like my home and I'm a homebody. So to me, it's like perfection. I travel a lot for work. I have traveled. I've been in so many different states and I just love Utah. One, it's home, but also, I don't know, everything about it. I think the mountains make it home to me, but the climate is my jam. Like I don't do humidity at all. So if I get into humidity, I melt. <laughs> and Utah has no humidity. Like if it has some, it's very, it's a desert. So there's very little humidity. The summers here are just green as can be. It is bipolar. Like you can have the craziest thunderstorms and then the craziest like sun in the same day. And even days, like you can have a day where it snows and then a day where it's like sunny and warm the next day. Yeah. It's really, it's crazy. Con, we had about six months of winter, like snow this last year. That kind of sucked. It was a rough winter. It, we just had so much snow and it's freezing cold for a very long time. I love it, like the first snowfall and up until Christmas, but then after Christmas, I'm like done with the snow and it just never, it never ended. There's one of two people in Utah. It's like you either embrace the winter and you absolutely love it or you absolutely hate the it. The kids love it right now with skiing. They well, yeah. loved that. Snow sport people love it. It's and that's the really greatest fun. snow on earth. It lasted a very long time. I will I will say though that I did get a, um, a season pass to go snowboarding every year, so I love winters. And then since children, I have not been like at all. So I started to not like winters as much. And Utah's very family oriented, so there's a ton of stuff to do with the kids. There's always fun places to take them and activities and so many like carnivals and festivals and fun parades and fun things to do with them. And it's just the mountains. Like you guys saw it from our Instagrams and stuff, but during the fall, like there's nothing like those I'll leaves see. changing. Like we spend so many days up in those mountains. So I love Utah. Carrie doesn't love it as much as me, but we both love Utah. I just love it a lot. I do a, a position shift. How do you feel we know as mamas we are done with having babies? As mamas? Yeah, Wait, what? as mamas. Okay, I think it's different for everyone because I feel, I have friends that are like so done after one or two and they just are done. They know they're done, don't want anymore. I feel like some of us, it's a lot harder because I love the baby stage so much love newborns just love babies and all i've ever wanted is to be a mom and have babies i feel like i will never i don't know if i'll ever feel like certain for sure like done ready to move on from the baby stages because i love them so much but you have to have a cutoff line yeah you have to stop somewhere <laughs> so that's just really hard because i don't know i'm the wrong person to ask and i've never really felt it for sure like i had just decided i thought i was done 
when we went on our trip to California and it was like easy. Asher was getting bigger. All the kids were more self-sufficient. We didn't have to pack all of our baby stuff. And I'm like, this is really nice and kind of appreciated that we didn't have all the babiness with us. So that was the very first time I've ever felt like, okay, I can see the next stage and it's fun. And it is fun. Like the kids are all getting older and having, they're like into things and becoming so cute. Like they're cute little own selves. And I love it. And I can see like moving forward. But then I also am like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine not having like a newborn and a baby again. So I don't know. I can't really answer that. We just have always known when people have asked us, are you guys done having kids? And the answer never was, was yes. yes. Like we, just, we were always like, I don't know. So that unsurety told us that. No, that it doesn't tell us that. I feel like well, I have to, I'll have to like men, like make myself like decide to be done. Yeah, but that's why like I was trying to go for number six. And I was like, I think and, I might be able to be done. And then I would say I, I, we would be done. But now after this, yeah, after the miscarriage, I'm like, okay, let's just do one more and then we'll know that we're done. We won't do any more after that. And it's just that I feel there needs to be one more. I just feel like it wasn't the time, the moment wasn't right, but there should be one more in our family. The next is why? Oh, I need to change positions again. <laughs> Come on, old man. Man, I'm just like getting achy. My <laughs> achy, breaky heart. Why were we in Wisconsin? So I went to Wisconsin and I just took the girls. It was my mom's family reunion kind of thing. It was with all my mom's side of the family. They're all from Wisconsin. So it was really fun. We got to go to the city that my mom grew up in. It's right on Lake Michigan. And we went to the house that she grew up in and took pictures out in front of it with the little girls. And then we traveled all over visiting family and it was the best. The girls saw fireflies for the first time and they were like, in love, it was so magical. The reason the boys didn't come is because it's kind of insane expensive, like tickets, renting the car, getting the hotel room, added up quick, and we were gonna try to drive, but I think it was like a 24 hour drive. No, we were gonna road trip, but yeah, 24 hour drive. It would have taken us like three days to get there and then three days to get home, which added almost a week to the whole trip. And the trip was a week long. We just didn't have time to do all of that. So we just decided this time I would just go with the girls and he's gonna go on a trip with the boys tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to Little Lava Hot Spring. Camping cabin kind of trip. We're gonna go so hot spring with the boys. The boys will get their little thing and the and girls will with me. But it was really fun, love Wisconsin. Love all the farmland. Someone asked, how old are our children? So, well now, I'm a child. I'm the sixth child so right my now, big, actually. my oldest child is 34. I'm 34 years old. God bless me. <laughs> uh, Kara also is 34. Gemma is six now. The six triplet. and a half. Six and she a half. will let you know she's six and a half. Before the end of the year, November, in fact, that's when Gemma and the triplets have their birthday, but she's six and a half, the triplets are four and a half, and Asher is two and a half. <laughs> yeah. A lot of half sizes. Wait, Pia? Pia is nine? She's old. She's like nine and a half. She's <laughs> nine and a half human She's years, nine. which translates to whatever dog years. Yeah. Which is a lot. You guys, Yorkies live a long time. And for how small she is, like we, she's like still just going strong. We love her to death, but I yeah. I mean, you can tell she's aging. She's getting kind of grumpy old lady, but she's it's, good. It's so funny to think that Pia's an old lady. <laughs> like she's an old lady dog and dog years. What's the next question? The next one is advice on how to stay connected to your spouse after a baby. Notice we got all cuddly for this one. <laughs> uh, how to stay connected after babies? I would say for sure it's like so important to have time alone, like date nights. If you can, get a babysitter or have family watch them and just take time to even just go grab dinner. Even still, that's like our go-to is just go get a nice Food. meal together. Just the two of you where you can hang out, talk uninterrupted and relax. My favorite thing to do is always go to dinner and a movie and we never go to movies anymore. You can't come home that late because of the kids. And I don't like going to movies. So it's just always like find the best restaurant and just go eat and then you're full and then you just want to have a sleep yeah. coma after we have a sleep coma. We'll even do like lunch dates during the day if we can. To remember that like you chose that person so you have to choose your love and you should love, love your, your choice. choice. Cheesy phrase, but a lot of meaning behind it. And then another one was for newlyweds. Like what advice, they asked if there's like an adjustment being newlyweds and what advice you would have for newlyweds. My for advice, sure, 
there was an adjustment. I feel like that's totally normal. I think it was a little bit harder for this guy to like snap out of only- Single life? Yeah, like single life only taking care of himself and scheduling his life around himself. Even after we had Gemma, like I feel like it was still, we were still kind of working through that. Marriage is all about compromising. Like he would want to go to the gym twice a day, but it would be like once in the morning and then he wanted to go once in the evening and the prime gym time in the evening was like right at dinner time. We have a baby now, we have a family, you need to like be home and eat dinner with us. And it was just something we had to work through. <laughs> You realize that no one is the same, right? Everyone's unique. And so like what the husband's likes and the wife's likes, they are going to be different and that's okay. And they should be that way. So I think it's finding common ground of what interests her and what my interests are and like allowing the person to enjoy their interests to like a healthy, you know, limited way where it still has like a good relationship at the same time. Not saying you can't do that anymore. That it's something that someone really likes to do and they say you can't do that. But I never that. said you can't do it anymore. I know what I'm saying. If someone were to say it to your spouse, but say like there's a hobby or interest they have and you say you can't do that anymore, I don't want you to do that anymore. And it's something they, they like to do. That's where I feel like a lot of relationships start to crumble because now it's like, it's like a dictatorship and not like a compromising yeah. common ground kind of thing. But you can just find a different time to do it at. So now he goes in the mornings and only once a day. It's great. Works out great. <laughs> Is it still working? Ugh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap up this present. You guys, it's been good. We have so many questions on here and we've only Wait. gone through like what? I know we haven't. 10 or I even 12? skipped, like I like kind of started one. So I'm like, oh, that's a good one. And I didn't even get through all those. So let's do one more. So one more last question and maybe we'll save these and do another vlog with more of the questions. The kids are now outside. We can see them out here just playing, jumping on the tramp, enjoying life. It's a beautiful day. Okay, this one is how do you manage the meltdowns, tantrums, and siblings like sharing, fighting? So yes, news we have flash, a lot of those. toddlers in general, they're gonna throw tantrums. Obviously like you people don't know, I guess, cause who's gonna share the tantrums online, but just like everyone else, our kids have their tantrums and their moments. I think 100%. it's really important to realize, like I follow a lot of parenting pages and they always point out their brains are not fully developed. Like them throwing tantrums and having emotional outbursts and not knowing how to handle situations is very normal for their age and it's part of them processing their emotions and learning how to cope and handle certain situations. So you can't just be like, oh my gosh, they're terrible children. Like it's very normal well, and it's a good thing. Like they are doing the best that they can with their brain development. So to handle it, especially having a lot of little kids, we have a lot of emotion. We try to separate. If someone's having a really hard day, like if Royal's having a really hard day, I'm like, Derek, take, 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 take out. Royal out for, a day, Just a one-on-one -on -one day. Go get ice cream. So he was having a rough couple days a few weeks ago and Derek like, it's not rewarding him because it's not like he's bad behavior and then you're like, let's go to the pool. But you just know that they're having that behavior because they need something. They're like lacking something. So I'm like, he just needs some like one-on-one -on -one attention and to get out of the house and just go do something just him. So he had a whole royal day and took him to the pool and to lunch and, it was fun. and he's to ice so, cream. He's so good when he's by himself. They're all so great when they're alone. Maybe it's because they're competing for like our attention too. Yeah, I think it's just important to realize that they're not just doing that to be bad or because they're bad. It's because they need something and they're trying to like get that across to you, whether Same. it's attention or they're hungry or they're tired or whatever it is. Like you were saying, their brains aren't fully developed. And a lot of times I think adults, the main thing that we get mad about is when our kids embarrass us, right? Cause it's embarrassing sometimes in public if your kid's throwing a tantrum, we have to realize their brains are not fully developed. So we can't expect them to act like adults, right? It's so like if you're supposed to be quiet in a certain area, like church or a movie, who knows? Anywhere you're supposed to be quiet and they're not being quiet. A lot of times they're throwing a tantrum. It's like, we can't hold them to the same standard as an adult. Their brains aren't there yet. Of course they're not gonna be quiet, you know, like they're kids. Obviously you can teach them, but I hate being embarrassed in public because I want my kids to be like, perfect, right? And so like, I hate when someone sees them throwing a tantrum because it's like, no, no, you need to be perfect. Like you're, I know how good you can be. Like, yeah, why are you you're doing so this? good so much why of the time. Why are you right acting now? like this right I'm now? I'm so embarrassed. And so sometimes that makes me get angry. It's helped me just realizing like, they're not there yet. Like they're gonna throw tantrums and it's so normal, but treat them with love. And I've gotten to the point where I started caring a lot less about them throwing tantrums in public. I know it's embarrassing. I'm never gonna see these people again. It's like, oh, sorry, and I think toddlers. As a mom or stay at home parent, you deal with it a lot more and like on a regular basis. And it's sometimes it can be a really rough day and it's like emotionally draining for us to have to deal with too. 
but I think just do the best you can. Usually they just need a hug. <laughs> they need a hug and they need you to talk and understand yeah. them. A long hug goes a long way if they're throwing a tantrum. Yeah. Show them love instead of reprimand. Everyone, no one is perfect on that. Just know that everyone's kids are gonna have tantrums at one point and we all did too. I threw a tantrum. You threw tantrums at your parents. <laughs> Ask them about it. Derek still throws tantrums. Tantrums. Oh, okay. let's go. Okay, oh. let's finish it. Okay. Well, chat fam, it's been fun answering the questions. I'm we so love tired. you guys. Kara's gonna take a little Sunday nappy nap. I need a pack because we're going to the, some hot springs with the boys. The girls have dance camp this week and then they start their teams. I'm really excited. There's a lot going on. The girls dance all the time. So it's been fun, you guys, and thank you so much for still sticking around. If you watch this long in the vlog to this point, you guys are true chat famers. We love you guys. Thanks for your support, especially during like the miscarriage. So much love has been shown to us, and we really appreciate it. And we love you, chat fam. And as always, XOXO. We'll see you guys on the next vlog. <laughs> good night and good morning. Sunday morning.